Welcome. This is a a video, a, a short video on ScanSpec VPI from ScanCAD International with emphasis on our scan component component programming product. We've got two people joining us today on this video. We've got uh, Bill Loving here in at uh, ScanCAD's headquarter location in Denver, Colorado, and we have Jeff Rupert in our Michigan location. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, today's agenda, uh, we're keeping this presentation short, but today's agenda is focusing on our ScanSpect VPI product and, as I mentioned, our Scan Component product. Uh, the agenda itself talks about the technology that's involved. We then step into the software that's running on these systems, uh, and we'll end up with a summary of, um, of what we cover today. And then after the uh, presentation, then we're going to jump into a demonstration uh, using the actual ScanCAD software to program components. That's correct. We'll be using the scan component product itself to actually program some devices as part of this video. So starting with the PowerPoint and ending with the uh, presentation of the uh, or actual demonstration of the product. Um, and, and the intent for that is to have a, a high level overview of what the hardware looks like before we actually talk about the software and actually see the system running so that everybody understands what all the uh, what all is involved with this system. ScanSpec VPI system is actually consists of several different uh, products put together. Uh, the Scan Stencil Light product, which is an inspection-oriented product. The Scan Place product, which is a board-level programming product. Component reference designators, uh, centroids, that type of thing. The Scan Component product, which creates vision files uh, for the components themselves, uh, lead pitch, body dimensions, that type of information. And then finally, there is a work instruction product that is part of this VPI package. Any one of these packages can be purchased separately. Uh, you can upgrade from one and add other capabilities, etc. The bottom line is with all ScanCAD products, and specifically the ScanInspect VPI product, the, the intent is to provide a low-cost, multi-purpose type of a system that really is designed to help in the process setup on production floors, eliminating rework, this type of thing. So for new product introduction, um, and just a real multi-purpose pre-production process control tool. Uh, this system certainly is unique in that it, uh, <coughs> it is so flexible and does so many things compared to the single function expensive type machines. Just a little information on ScanCAD, the company. Uh, we have over 900 systems installed in 46 countries, uh, going back over 20 years now. Everything we talk about today is PC-based, all low cost, easy to use, uh, and mainly in the electronics industry. On the technology slide coming up, you can take a look at what a typical VPI system looks like, which includes the desk. Um, this one has a solder paste stencil uh, over the scanner. The scanner on the right hand side here is located underneath the table here, and we have a, some more information on this in a minute, so you'll see a little bit more about that. As far as our VPI product philosophy, you know, very quickly, we we have a, a, a philosophy that permits our customers to upgrade over the last 20 plus years so that any hardware that's installed, we are always embracing new hardware, permitting customers to enhance their system if they choose to do so. So there are continuous upgrades in the hardware area that we support as well as in the software area. And as I mentioned earlier, process control and setup is the primary focus of this product here. Flexible, low cost, easy to use. The scanner technology is at the heart of all of these systems, including the scan component system. The scanner itself has lighting, has the camera, has motion control, all in one unit, uh, running at very high resolution, as well as color or black and white. So this is why we call it a very smart package. It is a calibrated device. It does have a NIST certified, a National Institute of Standards certified glass calibration plate that comes with the system. So it's fully traceable, supporting ISO environments. The scanner itself uh, has been, uh, obviously, uh, in, the technology has been improving over the years. And, and ScanCAD is always embracing the newest technology as it comes out. And the slide in front of you here is, is showing the, the scanners over the last 20 years that have been released and moving forward. Uh, and the scanner technology, uh, just to help level set this, uh, 
this model E24 scanner, which is uh, which we released to our customers in 2004, so about six years ago, this scanner is equivalent to 440 five megapixel cameras firing at the maximum resolution over an A3 size area, which is approximately 12 by 18 inches. So yes, 440 five pixel cameras. And this was six years ago. So the technology is truly amazing, the number of pixels and what's available to us as we move forward with this technology. And to put that into perspective, this allows us to look at very small objects. Uh, we even have systems looking at things as small as one mil wire bonds. So in the SMT assembly area, uh, you're pretty well assured that uh, any application you have, the scanner is going to do a great job on. Yeah, one mil, even 0.7 mil or less than 25 micron, even down to below 20 micron wires with this system. Uh, here is again the system or the image of the desk with the light box on it. Um, again, this is the VPI system uh, would, would come in this kind of a package as well as the scan stencil light package would be here. The scan stencil light package incidentally will inspect stencils only, so it really is an inspection tool and does not do any programming, for example. Uh, very quickly, these systems are contact systems, meaning we actually touch the part, scanner faces up, part faces down. We do have the ability to image uh, parts that are either dry or wet. When we say wet parts, we mean parts that might have uh, uh, solder paste or wet uh, adhesive glue on them because the scanners have focus capabilities, so we're able to image those. The lighting can be from the top or the bottom. I mentioned earlier it's a calibrated system. Finally, when in the programming perspective, we can program from CAD data, Gerber data, or actually use golden parts as well. Now, talking a little bit more about the scan component product, it would only be it would be a scanner only type product. So here we see the scanner. There's no reason to have a desk or the uh, top and bottom lighting for this type of thing. The lighting itself is bottom only. It does remain as a calibrated system, however. So there's a glass calibration plate that comes with it. And I'll mention the scan component product uh, normally ships with an A4 size unit. A4 being about the size of a sheet of paper, which is 8.5 by 11 inches or so, so A4 size. Whereas the scan place product would be scanner only, but shipping with the A3 size, again, 12 by 18 inches. As with all ScanCAD systems, it's always possible to upgrade, um, and it is possible to use a A3 size with the scan component uh, on an upgrade basis. For the ScanSpec VPI system, again, it it includes everything together, so you can see the whole picture here, how these things all handshake. So again, you can upgrade from the component only all the way up into the full capability. <clears throat> but from the standpoint of the inspection side, it does permit us to look at the boards themselves, the bare PCBs. You can look at the holes, the slots, the real estate, real estate on it, actually checking the manufacturability of an actual PCB before you get on your production line. Certainly, you can look at components themselves checking the differences between different vendors, different sources, etc. The bare boards themselves, whether they're organic or ceramic or flex type materials, it does permit you to check different job lots and verify that uh, indeed that different that all the boards are actually matching the data that you have set up on your line. So it really is a very powerful thing to avoid problems on the production line. I already mentioned the wet paste or adhesive, different kinds of things this thing will look at. Certainly the, scan, the uh, stencils or emulsion screens that are used in the production process, verify these are indeed clean, not damaged, everything's OK before you put them on a, a screen printer. So it, again, in, instead of finding a problem on the line, the whole idea here is to find the problem before production. So that's what we call this a virtual product inspection, virtual product or VPI. The same system here that does all this inspection, uh, since it includes the scan place capability, it's able to actually scan boards or import Gerber or CAD data, uh, even comparing these to make sure everything matches OK, and generate programs for surface mount or through hole machines, etc. The scan component capability adds the capability to create these component vision files, which we'll be seeing more of in a minute. Finally, the latest edition of the VPI product is this work instruction package, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more at the very end. Got some images here just showing uh, what the, the images. These are actual images off of the system. You can see, obviously, it's scanning in color. Uh, we're looking at solder paste stencil here. 
Here's a bare PCB. Flex circuit. Here's some solder paste or adhesive uh, images on the upper right corner. Component images, which we'll be working more with uh, just in a couple of minutes. And then finally, a loaded board image as well. All of these being an organic environment, it also applies just fine in the ceramic environment or for LTCC type materials. So here we have in a hybrid environment, uh, we, we're seeing printed materials, conductor adhesive type things. In this case, laser holes uh, cut in ceramic substrates or slots. Again, no different than a solder paste stencil. We're able to backlight and make, verify everything is OK before you move into a production process. This system, the same system, can look at photo tools, artwork. Here's some emulsion screen in the lower left. And again, loaded board here in a ceramic environment. So I think everybody can understand that this is truly a multi-purpose tool that can do a lot of different things, hence the real power of the VPI system. There's a study that was released in SMT Magazine April of 2006 that there's a link to here that you can go to. Uh, that study is still up uh, here in, in 2010. Uh, basically, the, the bottom line of this is the benefits of looking at a circuit board uh, job, you know, look at the circuit board before you make your solder paste stencil, verifying that the CAD data matches this exactly, and then modifying, modifying the Gerber data for the stencil to exactly match the board. And this study was done in, uh, in Motorola, and there was a 43% reduction in solder paste defects, 43% reduction in solder paste defects by simply having the stencil exactly match the board. As we move to finer and finer pitch devices, I think we all can imagine how important this is. And so the ability to modify that stencil data before you make the stencil is incredibly powerful. That's what the VPI system is able to do. And this graph here shows sort of a before and after. So you can see how the, uh, <clears throat> how the uh, solder paste printing will have defects here because you're not, you're not matching exactly on the pads. Okay, that's really pretty much it. Back to the uh, the stretch, um, as many of you know, there, there is always some stretch and shrinkage in these boards, and that really that's the the small amount that we're shifting the stencil to make sure everything really matches. So instead of uh, trying to rotate board versus stencil on the screen printer, which as you know you can never get exactly perfect, uh, here you you create the stencil so that it matches the board. Thank you. In the board programming environment, uh, so we're really done with the inspection side now. Uh, there are other videos that talk more in detail about how that works. Let's dive into the board programming and then components. Uh, just a couple of slides on board programming. Uh, this, again, is to scan place capabilities that are part of VPI. Uh, essentially, we're able to scan bare boards or even loaded boards and extract the information necessary for surface mount machines, through hole, test, even AOI equipment. So it's a, it's a very flexible programming type tool. Again, all of this running on the same inspection platform or just dedicated to the programming platform. Scan Place itself includes the scan component capability. So you could have board and component programming in one system or scan component. The lowest price system would be component only. We do interface to the various uh, SIM packages that are out there in the market today since most customers have those packages installed. Program process is very simple involves essentially an input process, an output kind of a flow. First step being inputting the data. Again, that could be scanned information, scanning a board, stencil, or a film. You can also import the CAD data or Gerber data, including bill of material, BOM data as well. All of these are layered on top of each other. So Gerber data is on top of a stencil image, which is on top of a bare board. Uh, and again, if there's a film involved, or maybe a assembly drawing or something like that. Um, very, very helpful to have all these things stacked in a graphic environment so you can see all the different layers coming together and verify everything's OK. Once you've inputted the data for the ScanPlace product, the system has the ability to automatically extract centroid information. Again, as I mentioned, bill of materials, you can merge that information in with the bottom line of creating the files needed for the machines on your floor and to work smoothly with any SIM package that you may have. Again, ScanPlace is beautiful because it has scanning capability, so it really does give your SIM package eyes, so it actually can see the boards, see the different things happening out on the floor, and eliminate surprises on the production line. And excuse me, Bill, uh, the slide is not advancing here. OK. It, fortunately, it's advancing on this side, so I think we're tracking fine.
Okay, sorry for the interruption. No problem. On the board programming outputs, uh, just we wanted to list a few of the machines here that you can see on the screen that, uh, that you would have on your floor. And again, for the SIM packages that are out there, we've listed a number of those on the screen as well here for you. Okay, moving forward to component programming. The primary objective of this system is to <laughs> eliminate the use of calipers or possibly shutting down production and using uh, Vision Teach on your machines themselves. The whole idea is to give you a standalone offline workstation to help you create component vision files. Uh, also, this is far better than using data sheets off the internet since this actually sees the components as they are or as your machine sees them. So. Uh, I uh, will move now to the next screen, which is a component library. So once you have these images in there, we actually are extracting the vision data needed for each of these machines. And this does support surface mount, uh, obviously uh, insertion, odd form, etc. So it's a real multi-purpose system. Again, in color, it's a very simple step-by-step -step process, and we'll step through that in a minute, actually seeing some of these devices you see here on the screen. In the end, you do end up with a, a data sheet, a component data sheet that exactly matches the component. So as I said, instead of downloading a data sheet off the internet, you end up with a, a data sheet that really matches the component as your machine sees it, uh, with all the, all the information fields that you're used to seeing in an internet type component data sheet. Uh, and then for some machines, for example, with Fuji or Assemblyon or Siemens, there's even uh, more customized interfaces, which we'll see in the actual product itself. Uh, so this will support any of the machines out there. And then for some vendors, we have even uh, higher levels of interface. OK, just a couple of minutes on work instructions as we close out this PowerPoint presentation. I wanted to share with you that uh, the ScanSpec VPI product also includes a light version of ScanCAD's work instruction software. So as you can see on the screen in front of you, this, uh, this system is designed to assist in, the, fl in the, uh, the flow of information on a production floor to assist people in, in getting their jobs done, either in a paper or a paperless environment. The objective here is to, is to give very clear work instructions on, you know, for example, uh, <laughs> running the screen printer or oven or profiles for different things, et cetera. So the, the folks on the floor have the current information needed for this specific job as it moves through. Uh, so this is a, a really powerful tool that can be used in your production processes, making it very easy, for example, to train new uh, employees coming on board. Uh, there's all kinds of different modules in this thing. We encourage you to take a look at it. Jeff, any comments on work instructions that you might want to add? No, I think you, you covered that well, Bill. Okay. Uh, this is a natural addition to the other machines you, or other software packages you may have on the floor because, for example, the traceability in this system includes all manual steps as well as any of the automated steps, so giving you full traceability as products move through your flow. flow. Um, okay, anyway, that's enough on uh, work instructions, just so you had a little, little snapshot on that. Okay, finally, just uh, closing out the VPI. A presentation here just indicating that uh, <coughs> catching problems before production is a good thing. So virtual problems are a lot less expensive and dramatic than real problems. Uh, when you are using this system in a, in, during production, we can, we can do sampling for statistical process control, pulling every fifth or 50th or 100th board off, making sure everything's OK, possibly from you know, screening solder paste to loaded boards, et cetera. Just a real nice multi-purpose system here. Bottom line of eliminating rework, environmental friendly, all the good things here. So bottom line is to eliminate surprises. As mentioned up front, these systems are proven. They are installed around the world. Uh, they are uh, private labeled and put under a variety of different labels out there as well. So not only sold under the ScanCAD logo, but ScanCAD systems are sold under the Siemens and Assembly On and Panasonic and DEC and some 12 different uh, companies use our vision systems integrated with their vision systems. OK, that's it for the PowerPoint presentation. We'll now go ahead and step into the software itself. And just very quickly, on the, as you enter our software, you can see along the top we have some pop-down menus that, you know, for importing data 
various, you know, like for example, the CAD data, Gerber data, etc. Also, the scanning capabilities. Obviously, since we're a scanner-based system, uh, there's also here's the calibration function that we talked about, since it is using a NIST certified glass grid. Uh, all the functions in, across the top are also available, or many of those, the commonly used ones, are available along the left-hand side here in the form of icons. So here's a CAD import, a BOM import, um, scanning an image, etc. When you scan an image, in this case, we'll be taking a look at a at a component, since we're looking at the scan component system here now, the software. Here we have scanned a BGA. And we'll just step through the process uh, here real quickly so you can see what this looks like. Uh, when you scan a BGA, you'll set it on the scanner, scan the image. I think we can all understand what that would look like. The system has the ability to zoom in and out at all different levels. I'll just go ahead and now and draw a box around the outside of this BGA. Okay, and just I move my cursor around. And um, oh, by the way, while as long as I'm in here, we might as well just give you an idea of what resolution and whatnot this was scanned at. If I zoom in close here, in fact, I'll get a little bit closer. Uh, we scanned this at around 4,800 dots per inch, so 4,800 dots per inch. I've now zoomed in here to 6,400 dots per inch, as you can see on my screen. And just to let you know, this track you're looking at here is two thousandths of an inch, two mils or 50 micron. I can measure that, by the way, by zeroing my cursor out at the lower left corner. You can see it says zero, zero, move my cursor up, and you can see the track width here as actually 2.4 mils on this track right here. So we're actually looking into the device. Obviously, for us, with the BGA, it's more important to look at the balls. So right now, we, we have drawn a, a window around this, um, this device. Our system has the ability to recognize those balls. So I'm now going to turn off the color image for a second so you can see that here it has the balls highlighted in green. In green. Um, and so we have this, this device here. At the top of the screen, what we'll go ahead and do now is turn on the assembly environment, which turns on the scan component capabilities. And for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, or I'm not going to go through all the details here, but uh, just sort of step through the, the steps that are relevant here. Uh, essentially, it leads the operator step by step through what they need to do to program this device. The first at the top here is the, if the machine is asking for what is the part number for this. So I've just used the part number, you know, 256. You could put in whatever other information you want to have on here, uh, rev, operator, etc. And you simply now step down through this. Okay, what machine am I going to program for? I mentioned earlier there's uh, some direct outputs for a variety of machines. Uh, if you want to keep it generic, just keep it undefined at this point. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just go ahead and program this first device for a Siemens machine. If I come down now to package ID, because I selected the Siemens machine, for Siemens, uh, there are only five different uh, accepted package IDs for a Siemens machine. And in this case, this is a rectangular device versus a cylinder versus a polygon or a tray. So we'll go ahead and do a rectangular device. And just answering our questions down. And we'll do a, a, a different machine in a second, so you can see what it looks like if we go to a different machine. If this was sort of an odd form device, we could use a polygon contour. It is not. So we'll just go ahead and grab a component center. Uh, you'll notice the word tray here, because you can use this for JDIC trays programming and this kind of thing as well. But here, since it's a component, uh, it's asking the question, are these symmetrical leaves, asymmetrical? Do you want the uh, uh, center of a polygon, or do you want the pickup point, for example, to be at the center of a cursor? So you could actually, if it's an odd form device or something strange about it, you could actually have an unusual pickup point. In this case, we're just going to go and do symmetrical leaves. You'll notice the system automatically put the cursor in the center of the device, in fact, I'll move it around here so you can see this cursor is in the center. It automatically said there are 256 balls in this window here. So we know how many uh, leads are on this BGA. Coming back up to the top, the next question is body dimensions. There's an auto detect capability. It places the dimensions on the width and height or width and length of, the, uh, of this device into this window here. You can adjust your tolerances if you want at this point. You can also add an offset if you want, but the default is zero, zero. And then the only thing we cannot do with the system here is the height. We still need to have, uh, or you can lay a component's edge, I guess, to get a height. But uh, you'll still need to enter a height information. So it has auto-detected that. We now move down to the next step. Are there any component fiducials? In some cases, components have fiducials themselves. And you can program them in here if you'd like. 
For some machines, like the Fuji systems, uh, you're able to program the cameras. You're using a bottom light, uh, bottom camera, top camera, etc. Different kinds of lighting. So, in the case of Siemens machines, we won't be doing that, and we're not doing a tray. In the case of a Siemens machine, we'll just go down now. Since this is a BGA, we're just going to go ahead and teach the BGA matrix, and boom. Very fast here, it inserted 256 balls. So instead of, and all of these are measured, by the way, from the center of the device, so it's very, very fast, very automatic. We can edit those if you want. Here it says edit BGA matrix. Uh, you can edit this in metric or inch, your choice. It gives you the XY location of every ball relative to the center of the device and the diameter of every ball. And here we have all 256 for the purposes of this demonstration here. Okay. So let's keep moving down the, the process. The next step after you've programmed it, and of course you can make any changes you want, is to go ahead and output. So we'll go ahead and output. I'll output in, uh, in metric. And we go ahead and create an output file. I'll open this window up so you can see what this looks like. So you can see at the top of the screen, we have the job name. Uh, here is the part number that you saw me enter a second ago, operator name, etc. A date and timestamp body size information. Uh, we didn't have any fiducials, so the fiducial section is D. And then finally, here we have the X and Y location and ball number and diameter for every one of the balls on this BGA. Jeff, any comments at this point? No, nope, that was a very good job, Bill. OK. So there is a BGA program, very straightforward. Uh, if this was a Siemens machine, uh, at the time you output this, it also outputs a file that can go into the CPlace Pro software. All right, we're going to go ahead and quit. And let's go ahead and bring up another image. By the way, we're in a directory here that has all kinds of different components. And as you program, you'll, you'll find that you can place like this BGA in here from one vendor. And if you get the same BGA from a different vendor, you can overlay the images to verify they match perfectly on your system. And if they don't, uh, all it is is a matter of changing the data that I just did, and you have one that will match perfectly. Let's move to a connector now, just showing how this process works with a connector. Um, I'll zoom in so you can see what this connector looks like. So we have a connector that we've laid on the scanner. We scan the, the image. I'll move over to the right side of the connector. You can see the various leads on this connector. I'll zoom back out again. Same process as before. Uh, have the ability to recognize the leads. Let me turn this off so you can see the green leads here. So the system has the ability to, to recognize those leads. We extracted that from the color image information. And then we simply move down through this component programming process again. Uh, just like before, you can draw a window around the device okay, to get those total body dimensions in there. And you simply move down. So the next, this part here, uh, we can say the part number is 1, 2, 3. Uh, this is Rev 12, let's say, and we'll leave Isabel's name in here. And we simply move our way down through this. So what machine are we going to program this for? Um, in this case, I guess I could say Fuji. Okay. And if we now look at the package ID for a Fuji, we can see that we have a variety of different uh, package IDs. See how this is different than the Siemens machines? So in this case, this is an odd form, so I'll just go ahead and put other down. Okay. And then we move down to the process. Just like before, this is not a contour. We'll grab symmetrical leads again. Okay, So you can see now, again, I'll, I'll highlight this for you at the bottom lower left corner. It shows there's 120 leads on this device. And uh, we're centered here on the device. Just moving down through this, um, the, the size of the device, again, you can auto detect. It automatically puts in the, the information here. Again, you enter the height. We next move down to component fiducials. There aren't any. In the case of, the, of this, uh, this device for the Fuji, you would have your choice of top or bottom lighting. It makes sense for this one for bottom lighting because the leads are not visible from the top. And you would step in the P pattern and the specific camera information for your specific machine, if you care to do so at this stage, or you can certainly do that at a later stage in your Fuji software. OK, moving down, um, we then are going to do, teach the lead groups. And so this is a little bit different than the, uh, than the BGA. You actually draw a window around the lead group that you want to teach. And you teach a single lead group. You define what kind of lead, whether it's a ball, goal wing, J lead, or wraparound. So you define the type of lead. 
And it will now go ahead and create the centroid of this, this, uh, this lead. You'll do the same thing for the other leads, and then you output. So that is how this guy works. Um, let me just do something here real quick. One second, please. Okay, sorry for the delay here. Um, it <laughs> turns out I've selected a component that is not compatible with the Fuji system. So this is it's giving me an error message here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and program this for a different machine ID. In this case, I'll go back to Siemens for a second. And we'll program another device for Fuji here in a minute. But I can go ahead and change it back to Siemens. In this case, you would change to the appropriate Siemens shape here, in this case, a rectangle again. And you would draw a window now around the leads that you would treat as a lead group. So we'll come down here and teach a single lead group. And again, you can pick the different shapes that are appropriate and program that. You'll see that it, it programs it by turning it gray on the screen. And you can then ask the system to go ahead and find any other lead groups that match that. And so it found the other lead group here automatically. At this point, just like before, we're ready to output. And we'll go ahead and output this in metric format. And again, it gives us the description of this. It's very different than the BGA we did a minute ago. In this case, we have two lead groups of 60 leads each. You can see the exact pitch, x and y offset, angle of those lead groups, the type of lead, the lead sizes, etc., uh, and as well as the body dimension information here and more information about this device. So that is the connector here. We'll go ahead and quit out of this one and just bring up a couple more devices just to make sure everybody understands how this system works. Uh, let us do move down to a, a crystal at this point, an oscillator. And uh, again, we have the, the color image uh, of the system here on the screen. It has extracted the pad information. I'll turn this off so you can see that. Okay. And again, it's, it's how you want to program this for the system. Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, draw the window around the device like we did before. Okay, come up to the top. Let's go ahead and uh, give this a part number and uh, maybe a rev. Uh, I'll just put in someone's name here. A part number, of da, 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 okay, and a rev of, let's say, rev A. The operator, I'll go ahead and put my name in here at Bill. And we'll just now move down through this. We'll move to the machine ID. We'll try to do a Fuji on this one. This should be able to be placed on a Fuji just fine. Package ID for this. Again, we'll, we'll select the correct package ID okay, for this crystal, this oscillator, and then move down through the different stages here. Symmetrical center again, coming up, coming down to the size again. You can auto detect the size on this guy. That's fine. Come on, on down, no fiducials. Uh, let's not worry about the camera at this point. You know, or, oh, we can say, okay, bottom camera and bottom, that's fine. And then we'll go down and teach lead groups again. Again, the way this is done is you draw a window around how you'd like this taught as lead group. You could certainly, for this device, you could teach these as single lead groups. I could put pairs together. It'll find the top pair and the bottom pair. Or you could certainly do them from one side to another. So I'll just do from one side to another here. Teach a single lead group. And what kind of lead these are, these wrap around G lead, gold lead, et cetera. So the type of leads that they are. And then we'll go ahead again and teach all lead groups. So you can see it finds the other lead group here. Now the interesting thing with Fuji is, you can probably see this little mark right here. Fuji measures from the inside of the lead group to the center of the device, which is very different than most systems that measure from the centroid of the lead group to the side there. Once we're ready for output, we can go ahead and do another output here, again in metric. And I will show this here. We have uh, here this sample component crystal. You can see the part number that I put in. My name here is the operator date, timestamp, body dimensions. And now we have all this information here for the Fuji machine. OK. So that is a crystal. We've done a connector, a BGA. Let's quit out of this. And let's take now a look at um, 
to some images of other devices. Uh, just so you can see some unusual devices here. Here's an IBM CGA. Uh, just letting you zoom in a little bit. And even devices that may have bent leads. Let's get in closer here so you can see what this looks like. You can see the leads are bent, which is not a problem. You can use those kinds of devices to help with your programming, even though, you know, or you can even use this to check your devices. Because on top of that, we'll place what the where the leads are supposed to be. So you can see right away we have a problem here. So I thought you might get a kick out of that. So there's a CGA, a ceramic grid array. Here's a PLCC device. You can see what this looks like on the system. Okay. Um, again, the programming is exactly the same that you saw a second ago. Um, we can move down through. Here's a socket, sort of an odd form kind of a thing. So you can see what this looks like on the system. Again, I'll zoom in a bit so you have the benefit of seeing this. Again, very powerful. You can see where your vacuum pickup points are going to be. Uh, very, very handy. You actually see the part as Gene sees the part. You can scan the top of the part and the bottom of the part if you wish. Store them as different layers. You can store up to 99 layers in the system. Take a look at some other devices here. Uh, an SOP. Okay. Uh, as you'll notice, some of these have a white background, some a black background. It's however you want to, to uh, image your, your components. Most of the time, customers use a black background. Uh, let's see here. Oh, a 105. Oh, 105. Very small device. And I'll take a peek at this guy. Um, just to <laughs> let you see here. Jeff, you see that okay? Yep. That'll come up for yep. you. Uh, you I went ahead and th threw a larger device on here in this 01005 device. You can take a look here. It is obviously very small. Again, the same exact programming that you've done before. Um, you, can, you can make this very, you can zoom in really close if you want, zoom back out. It's, you know, it's really it's up to you how you want to program this device and move through the programming process. Again, very, very small device. Uh, you can see the pad sizes here are uh, the 5 mils by 8 mil diameter. And there's two pads here on this guy. So a very small device, but again, right down to 001, 005s. OK, um, let me just uh, come back in here just for a second. Uh, all we've been using here is this component menu to step down through this process. For a scan component, this is pretty much all you do. You, do, you scan your device. You step down through this process, and you output. Typical components are around five minutes to program. They're stored here. So you have full traceability, full history. Uh, again, you can overlay images of older devices onto newer devices, making sure the vision files still work, et cetera. Uh, that pretty much summarizes it. Um, well, I should say that if you do uh, run with an undefined part ID here, machine ID, then you have a huge number of package IDs that you can work from as well as add your own into this list as well. OK, I think that pretty much covers what we want to talk about today on the Scan Component product. Again, please feel free to look at the other videos uh, where you can see the um, Scan Place product in detail, the Scan VPI product in detail, et cetera. So this concludes this video here. And Jeff, if you have any closing comments at this time. Nope, nope. I think you did a very good job. Just thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Let us know how we can help you. And of course, we're more than happy to perform a demonstration, a live demonstration, or a video demonstration using your actual parts. Thank you much. Take care.